Hey everybody, Jared of Second Life Design. Welcome back to Milling Monday. Uh, last video we talked about uh, some of the safety concerns associated with milling. Uh, you know, using an Alaskan winch to keep your hands out of the bar area as much as possible, the ear and eye protection, and how those are important. I purposely left out what I consider to be the biggest kind of risk associated with chainsaw milling. I, I wanted to talk about it on its own. Uh, I think it's important for people to consider, and I, it kind of applies to everyone, no matter what kind of milling you're doing or what your operation is. Um, to me, heavy lifting, moving slabs, stacking slabs, um, anything to do with transportation of them, moving them, that is the biggest risk that I face as a chainsaw miller. Uh, I feel very comfortable with all the rest of the operations, but when it comes to moving them, to me, that's the part that sucks the most. It is what is is the most dangerous uh, for a few reasons. You know, obviously, the, the, you know, we're taking a piece that could weigh 200, 300 pounds, up, sometimes much more than that. Uh, you're trying to get it off the ground. We need to get it flipped over so we can stack it. Uh, it's an odd, it's an odd shape. You know, it's not a square thing all the time. Uh, it, it's you're operating in if you're out in the woods somewhere milling. It can be uneven terrain. Um, yeah, there's just so many different th uh, unknowns with that, and it's something that has to be done. You have to get that slab off there. Once you cut it, it's got to go somewhere. You know, if, you ha if you're operating kind of like myself in a driveway where it's a flat surface, you're a little bit better off, but I still don't have any heavy equipment. I can't have a forklift or a skid steer or anything like that. So it's all done by hand, and that is, you know, you're putting your back at risk. You know, I've heard of guys, many guys, uh, you know, getting a hernia from... Uh, if you're moving slabs, they're just they're dramatic. They're very heavy. They are so so heavy, and I think that's it's a very quick, easy way to get hurt, and it needs to be considered. Um, uh, you know, ask for help. Call in your neighbor. Call in your buddies. Don't try the stuff al alone. I I've been very fortunate where I've not had any really close calls where I've you know what I'm standing a slab up. You know, people that follow me on Instagram know I like to stack them up against the house for a month or so. After I cut them, let them dry out a little bit and get the dust off of them. I've never had an issue where one got away from me, but I purposely also cut my slabs really short. I don't do anything over nine, nine and a half feet. Um, I'm not quite six feet tall, just under that. And the idea of a 10, 11 foot slab, you know, where you have five feet above me, that is terrifying. You know, something that is three feet wide and trying to get that up. No way, man. That is terrifying. Um, does that always need to happen? No, but that doesn't mean that it, something bad couldn't happen with a six foot slab. So I, I don't have as much of advice with this, but I think it's something I want everyone to consider. Um, I want, please share your comments below about what you do to help move things. I, I have, I use a few different things in my, my own arsenal. I have a pallet jack. I, I mill in my driveway. It is it's a narrow one lane driveway, but I have a hard surface, so a pallet jack, pallet jack works. I use pry bars, where I'm actually not doing the lifting, I'm using leverage to flip things over, to pick them up, whatever. I also, with myself, I am gravitating towards doing single slabs. Those are real damn heavy. You know, I have right now in my driveway a, a 50 inch diameter sycamore log that's every bit of four tons. So that's 8,000 pounds of log in my driveway that I'm going to cut into 10 pieces, maybe, but those are still some really heavy damn pieces. So there's no way for me, as strong, it doesn't matter how strong I am, there's no way I could pick that up. There's just no way. It doesn't, ma doesn't mean that I can, I can even pick up one corner sometimes where they're just so heavy. So you have to use different things to your advantage to move them, whether it, if you have a log trailer, use the arch to pick things up, um, a gantry crane, get your four buddies over and offer them, you know, buy them lunch to help you stack some slabs. I, I just, I don't want anyone to get hurt and I, and I want you to enjoy your experience. And I know I've had to soar back from stacking slabs for days. I'm sure you have too, but I think it's something you don't need to, don't overdo it. You want to do it long term, find a good way to work safely. You know, I, I, I it's, everyone has seen the OSHA videos where you talk, they talk about, you know, never, lift with your lift with your legs not your back and never twist or whatever if it's an odd shaped slab it's gonna it could go on its own it puts you in a weird position you know try and think about those things um yeah it's just it's a really scary thing guys i 
I, I wish I had better answers for you. I know it works for me. You know, just keeping things as low as possible. Um, yeah, use leverage, wheels, things like that to your advantage. But every such, everyone's situation is different. So, like I mentioned, please drop your comments below on how you work with moving heavy slabs. I, I'm interested in hearing what other people have to say. I can definitely follow up with this. Um, I know it seems kind of silly for this to be an entire video, but I want, I really can't hammer this point enough that heavy lifting is where you're going to get hurt. It, everyone has to do it. Even I, I've seen um, people stacking slab, you know, they'll, they'll do the European style stacking, where they have, you know, they're in the shape as they come off the log, stack another one on top of that, that whole damn thing falls over on someone. I, I've seen that. I mean, there's just so many ways to get hurt because these are such heavy things. So just please be aware of that. Do what you have to to mitigate that risk. You know, don't stay in the danger zone any longer than you have to. So uh, I'm going to get back to chainsaw milling stuff, guys, like the nuts and bolts of things. I, the safety stuff, I think, is important to talk about uh, for different reasons. I, when you get complacent about safety, that's when bad things happen. So I don't want you to be nervous about it, but I want it to be in the back of your mind. You know, even with something as simple as the earplugs and the respirator mask, all that, that's just as important, but be aware of all the things that can happen. When you're aware of what can happen, you, it's in your mind and you always be thinking about it. That's as easy as I can say it. So I'm going to, I'm working on some videos about sharpening and other tips and tricks and that those are coming. They'll be coming in the near future. So if you're, if you're getting bored of the safety stuff, I, I appreciate it, but it, there's new things coming. I promise you. Um, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. You can always find me on Instagram at second life design. And I appreciate all the feedback and support. Uh, we're, you know, the, the, the snowball is building. We're getting a lot of views out of this. I get nothing but good comments. So I really, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that, guys. So uh, any other questions or comments, leave them below. Thanks.